Uh, hey, Stephanie, welcome to NetLeash TV. I've got Stephanie Sigalski with ICSC. Um, I know that recon's coming up shortly, and uh, that's part of this kind of interview. Um, what, what do you see coming up that's kind of new with ICSC? What are some of the events that are going to be happening uh, that can give developers, agents, leasing agents, uh, finance people, kind of a strategic advantage uh, if they attend the event. Tell us how many people will be attending and just kind of give us a flavor for ICSC Recon in Vegas this year. Sure. So as always, uh, Recon is a deal-making deal event, um, first and foremost. But uh, this year, just like the industry is changing, we're changing things up a little bit. Uh, the, you know, it'll be the typical setup of, uh, you know, um, the properties and the retailers and whatnot, but we're also introducing six new destinations uh, that are reflective of what is actually happening within the industry. So we will have a whole section of what's called retail and focus, and that is based on a, a bunch of emerging brands, like almost a couple dozen emerging brands um, who are those formerly digital retailers that are going into the physical space. So they will be there to showcase their products and to talk about their journey, uh, the importance of brick and mortar. Uh, and so just to be able to, the, we'll sit on some panels and just have open discussions. We will also have a new health and wellness center uh, that's reflective of kind of the changes going on in that field. Um, whether it's fitness, there will be fitness providers there, as well as, um, you know, CVS, Kaiser Permanente, Walgreens, um, all of which are doing amazing things. You know, Walgreens is trying to make it the, you know, your local primary care physician. CVS is partnered with Aetna. Um, we will be promoting Red Nose Day uh, with Walgreens. So we really want people to understand that this is the new norm. Uh, we'll have our, our specialty retail, which is formerly Spree, uh, outlet centers. Uh, we will have a, a finance center um, to, you know, talk all those financial pieces of, of the business, uh, as well as the talent development pavilion and the colleges and universities center. So where, you know, the talent comes into play, whether it be young talent or developing talent, um, we want them to have areas. And then in the grand lobby, we'll have our innovation exchange. And this is the second year we're doing that. And that is all the new technology um, and vendors who are putting technology into retail space or taking technology and taking retail to the next level. So we have a lot of new things this year that we're very excited about. Um, and it, like I said, it's very reflective of what's going on in, in, at, excuse me, what's going on in the industry as a whole. Walgreens and CVS, or I believe it was CVS, is going to start to focus more on chronic illness uh, in the front of the store because they know that I think um, every day there's 10,000 people turning 65. And uh, over the next 20, 30 years, people will have two or three chronic illnesses that they're going to have to deal with. So Walgreens and CVS are really going to start to focus in on helping people that have more serious medical conditions. You know, the baby boomers are going to be going into that era now where they're going to need more medical care. So it Absolutely. looks like that's an area Absolutely. that um, will definitely grow. And ICSC is starting to, sounds like with this initiative, get involved with that. Would you agree? I, I definitely agree. It is um, very much on the forefront of people's minds. You have the baby boomers who are aging and, and are going to need more health care. Um, most Americans are, Walgreens and CVS have recognized this, most Americans are willing to give up their primary care physician for a physician closer to them. Um, and so when you have a Walgreens or CVS, um, on every corner, it's very easy to do that. Uh, but you know, on the flip side, you've got millennials who are very health conscious and are looking for fitness. And so what we're seeing is this growth and not just what was traditionally the big box gym, 
but the boutique fitness, the soul cycle, the yoga studio, uh, all of all of those types of things that are attracting many people. And we talked earlier, <laughs> could that be a double-edged sword here that's going to lead to our demise? I know Amazon, you know, was using FedEx and then they just, after they started getting more powerful, put an end to that and did their own FedEx trucks and kind of bypassed FedEx. And now they're, I believe they're doing something similar with Kohl's. I would be a little scared if I was Kohl's, you know, um, be kind of dating up with them. Are they going to do the same thing that they did to FedEx to Kohl's and us at ICSC? Are they going to, you know, is all these things going to be our demise in the long run? That That's the only thing that I'm a little fearful about. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't think so. The, the, the general consumer still loves physical retail. 90% of all transactions still take place in a physical store. Um, I think that Amazon is willing to try anything. They, they are not afraid to go out there and try something, whether it's successful or not. Uh, I, but I really believe what you're seeing is not just Amazon making moves, but smart retailers like Walmart and Target responding to that. So one, Amazon has has realized that physical stores are important. You know, we saw that with the Whole Foods acquisition. You know, it, as you mentioned, it could be Kohl's next, but they understand the value of the physical store. As but you look at Walmart, they understand the digital space and the value in that. And so, you know, their acquisition of Bonobos and Jet. And so, it, it, diversifying that portfolio, I think, is what is becoming important. Uh, I also think that you're seeing some of the larger, larger players like Walmart responding to Amazon. So during the Amazon earnings call, when they announced one day um, shipping for Prime members, within a day, Walmart was already pushing out, you know, what sort of a precursor to their next strategy as well. Uh, so it's, it's good competition. Uh, you know, Amazon's only like 4% of total retail sales. And even Jeff Bezos recognizes that um, he's not he's not taking over retail sales. Um, but he is, he is making some strategic decisions that are disrupting not just um, retail or brick and mortar, but as you point out, a lot of industries. There, I know I shop at Amazon or uh, Whole Foods in Del Mar here. And you'll get one bag of groceries, and it is rather expensive compared to a Stater Brothers or a Vons or a Sprouts. It, it seems like for every three bags you get there, you get one bag at Whole Foods. So um, I still I think they're trying to figure that out. But uh, getting back to, you know, I just am a little fearful that, um, you know, you don't want to slit your own neck at the end of the day. Um, now, you know, the interesting thing is, it, you know, and everybody made fun of Whole Foods before Amazon acquired them because of the pricing. Um, but to your point with Amazon, if you look at any of their 10K or 10Qs, they don't make their money off of the products that they sell. In fact, they are typically taking a loss because of the shipping costs that they cover. But they have an incredible... Um, E -com or a cloud business, and in fact, they're the, the largest um, web platform in the world as a provider. So that is where they're making their money, which enables them to do some of the things that they're doing on the, the retail consumer side. I think what the physical stores definitely have to cross into their ter territory and get good with the e-commerce so that when somebody comes into the store and checks out their products, they're kind of like indifferent and don't go over to Amazon because they have a better price and don't buy it at that specific store. You know what I'm saying? Well, and that's where the retailers need to make sure that they're creating a, a complete customer experience um, from the customer service all the way through, you know, to what their footprint looks like. Uh, because if a customer has a good experience, they're more inclined to purchase there as opposed to just going and finding, you know, the less expensive alternative. Um, and if 
they have a good customer service experience, they actually stay longer in the store and end up spending more money. So it is important to have that customer experience that you actually may, you know, you don't typically get with an online retailer or an online um, setting. Uh, so that's really where retailers are going to have to step up. Transition a little bit and talk about your website. I had a suggestion that what would be neat in your um, your filter when you go on your website, if there was the ability to go in and say, I want to call on all the Walgreen landlords or developers or meet up with them at ICSC or CVS or Jack in the Box or Dollar General. That was one suggestion. And then you mentioned that you have an initiative, you're restructuring your website to do that. Things like that similar, right? Yes, yeah, so we've we've been going through um, a lot of systems upgrades. Our our website was part of that um, October two Octobers ago. Um, we are moving all of our databases over to new platforms that will be, um, you know, I mean we're we're like everyone else, we're dealing with new technology and the change in technology and catching up with technology. And so we are in the process of moving our platforms over to give more functionality um, to our systems, to include our website. I interviewed Pat Berman over at um, Cushman Wakefield. And I was also talking to my tech, Lance. Lance, you know, is up on all the tech stuff. I'll get on a call with Lance and he'll work on my computer and for about two hours, He'll get me up to speed on all the latest stuff in tech. But what I was telling Lance and then I was discussing with Pat, with this 5G coming out, uh, what could happen is people will want to do conventions like virtual reality conventions. Um, the thing is, for me, if I'm going to ICSC, I enjoy jumping on the plane and going to the airport in San Diego, having a Starbucks coffee, having I normally go out Saturday and I'll go to the Encore and then go by the bar there in the pool, go in the jacuzzi, have a couple drinks, go back to my room, take a shower. And it's, it's almost kind of a work vacation and it's a lot less stressful. So, you know, I was telling Lance and I was telling Pat, it's just kind of the experience of the convention. I don't know if they'll ever be able to replace that experience of being with people and having kind of a yeah. festive time while you're trying to do business. Would you agree with that? I agree with that. I, I think that there's in, in this industry, there's, it is so important to have those face to face human interactions. Um, that's what business deals are about. I, I don't think that that will ever change. I also think, you know, when you look at um, this fear that that Gen Z is the first digitally native um, generation and millennials will only do things online. What we're finding is they spend so much time online that they want to go to a physical store because they want the social interaction. And so I think that this is much the same where the retail real estate industry to, to do these deals, it is so important to have those, those in-person networking experiences. So, you know, maybe... 60 years from now, it, when, you know, we're, we're all in the, some sort of digital realm, uh, but not in the near future. Why do I go to ICSC? The main reason I go to ICSC, and I think I started going to ICSC around year 2000, so it's been um, 19 years of going to ICSC, is really to meet people that I can do business with, right? That's the main reason I go. For me, it's kind of like an investment. I think of it instead of like marketing. I do a lot of marketing on Google AdWords. I'm mm -hmm. doing marketing on uh, Facebook. And I think of it the same way. I've got to get a return on the amount of money that I'm putting into ICSC. I think the best thing for ICSC is if ICSC can brainstorm and come up with as many ways as you can put new people together that would benefit each other so i don't know if you've and that's going to take a little bit of studying it's almost like a you know a psychological project mm -hmm. you know getting maybe have somebody that just studies and puts some initiatives together that are going to put you it's almost like a, a dating site right <laughs> <laughs> 
you, I, I am married, love it. Love it. I, I've been married since 98, but if I became single, probably I won't. My wife will <laughs> punch me if she heard me. But if I'm going on a dating site, they're going to ask me questions like, you know, your personality trait questions, and they're going to put me together with somebody that's kind of compatible with my traits. If you could do study each person, right, and figure out who's another person that this person maybe, you know, with what they're doing, in my case, I'm doing financing, and you could put together like a algorithm or regressionary analysis that would say these are the good people that Chris should see and then put those people together at the convention. I think that could be huge because – it would save you a lot of time. It would focus you right in on the people that you want to do business with. And I imagine eventually that's where with technology and LinkedIn, that's probably where it's going to go. People only, what I noticed at ICSC, I only have so much time in the day. So I want to make sure that I'm doing optimum relationships that are going to optimize my time and put me in with the people that are best suited for what I'm trying to do. So just a suggestion. Um, well, and I, I'll say we we have actually spent um, this year a lot of time looking at our membership base and kind of, you know, figuring out what they like, what they want. Um, we, we do know that uh, the, the most important thing to the membership are our networking events. Um, and so, yes, we are looking at how can we make those better and, you know, a better experience and more valuable to our membership. So that is something we actually are actively working on at the moment. You know, where I've met a lot of people is just like I'll hang out in the CBS booth and, and there'll be developers waiting to meet with CBS, right? So those are the people that I'm targeting are the developers. Those are the people that are going to need to take out loans. They're going to want to refinance. They're going to be listing. Once they do a CBS deal or a Walgreen deal or a Jack in the Box deal, they're going to be selling that property and they can refer me to the agents. So those are the people I'm kind of targeting. What would be nice also is to get the deep, the head people out of their booths and into the general circulation. Now, again, mm -hmm. that comes back to timing. Yeah. And maybe they, they want to make, they want to have good meetings that are effective, but to put people together that have common ground, that's, that's the main thing. Um, so now let's say I just did a deal like I, I'm closing a Ruby Tuesday. Hopefully I'm closing a Chick-fil-A that we're financing. And then I got a um, Panera Bread acquisition loan. And I was going to write up a press release. Is there going to be somebody at the ICSC where I can go to give my press release? Is that a free service if I attend the convention? Or will they only accept certain press releases? How does that work as far as, uh, for? I believe you have a magazine, right? ICSC does a magazine. We do, SCT. Um, so as, as far as the press releases go, we do have a media room where um, all media attendees can work, can, um, you know, just sort of collaborate in there. And so we encourage any attendee of ICSC of the event to um, if they have news that they want to announce to bring copies of their press releases with them and they are welcome to leave them in that press room which is actually right next to registration in North Hall um, and then they are available for the media who are on site. You know the, the only other suggestion that I have for ICSC as I mentioned uh, my family owns a center in Ohio and we just uh, we got, we did get Save a Lot at the 2012 ICSC. I got Save a Lot. Uh, we had Michaels in the building, and they moved out. Our building is 30,000 square feet. So my brother and I, and my dad, we cut the building in half. We put Save a Lot in 15,000, but we've got an additional 15,000 that we'd like to lease. Our our leasing agent is uh, CBRE, so they're helping us. And our agent, um, Moss is his last name, is going to be at the ICSC. Um, again, 
you know, if he had a way to zone in on what would be, what would give him the highest probability of success of releasing our 15,000 ahead of the convention and then meet those specific tenants, that is, that's huge. If you could set up your website in that capacity where you're just, again, focusing on those tenants that would be best for our center in Parma, Ohio, this 15,000 square feet in a center. Do you see what, you see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's it's obviously something that we can look into. I think that that's probably a um, uh, maybe something we can consider under the new platforms. Um, I, you know, that's that's about all I can say. So, so the transition here. What what is going to give somebody an advantage again um, that we haven't talked about going to ICSC? And um, what are the different things somebody can come and can do? I guess they can they can network, they can learn about new tenants, they can find out what their their fellow developers are doing. What what are some other strategic things when somebody comes to an ICSC in Vegas? Well, first of all, on Sunday, um, which is the day before the show floor opens, there is an entire professional development day. So you can go to sessions throughout the day to learn um, about the industry, about, you know, what, what the changes are, or perhaps you need um, more information on, on how to craft a lease. There's those types of things that are available during professional development day. Obviously, when the show floor opens, it's always great if you have the time to walk end to end. Um, like I said, we will have some new areas that will feature different panels throughout. So there will still be some learning opportunities beyond professional development day and an opportunity to, you know, hear from different people within the industry. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the, the primary focus for most attendees is the deal making. And it is not uncommon for a year's worth of deals to be done in that two days in Las Vegas. How can Michael help somebody promote? Like, should they call Michael to do additional advertising promotions? And how, how much lead time before the convention should somebody be dealing with Michael to set up a, a, a marketing uh, program? Well, we have a couple of things. Right now, um, and in fact, we sent out an email today if um, for advertising opportunities within the Wall Street Journal for a special section that will run leading up to um, Recon. Uh, as far as advertising um, for the our publication that will be on site, that has closed. Those are all printed. Um, but we do have, and, and Michael can help, um, our whole uh, business development and trade show team. We still have sponsorships available, so there are still some opportunities um, for digital ads uh, at the show. Um, so there's still some opportunities if people want to, and it's all the information is on the website. His email address is mb, as in boy, e-l-l-i, at icsc.org. Awesome. I, I, I really, Mike, every time I've met Michael, he's so personable. He's a great guy to represent you guys on the, the marketing side. Um, quick question that I've heard from people. Why did the Western states move to San Diego, uh, LA from San Diego? I used to be in the first American title golf tournament every year. I'd go out, sponsor a beautiful day, and then I'd go to the party and overlook the beautiful marina. I love LA. I'm doing a lot of deals. I have an office in Beverly Hills, but the venue from just different people I've talked to, they love the marina and the beautiful surroundings and the hotels when they fly in versus LA. Um, is there a chance that you would move it back to San Diego? So we did move it to Los Angeles due to some um, just logistics issues in San Diego. We have heard from a lot of people that they miss San Diego. So um, within the next couple of years, uh, the event will be moving back to San Diego. Okay, awesome. Now, where do you normally hang out at? I always hang out in South Hall near the CBS booth. 
and there's Dollar Tree and Family Dollar. Um, I think Dollar General's in this area too, and a lot of the fast food. The other cool thing down here is Jersey Mike's. So if you get hungry, yeah. <laughs> you just walk right down to Jersey Mike's. There's Jersey Mike's, and they're handing out the sandwiches. And then if you want a cup of coffee, you can walk up here to McDonald's. They're always giving away the free coffee, which is pretty cool. Now, where, you've never been in South Hall. <laughs> I have never been to South Hall. So that is my goal this year, to get to South Hall. South Hall is um, a big party if you come. It is. It is. It's, um, I uh, am, as you can imagine, dealing with the media a lot, um, dealing, you know, helping facilitate things with our CEO, Tom McGee. So I am usually somewhere between Central Hall and North Hall um, or going back and forth to the Westgate, depending on if it's time for the keynote speaker or whatnot. But this year, yes, it is my goal to get to South Hall and uh, walk the show floor. I'm down to Jersey Mike's or uh, Star, uh, McDonald's. Have a cup of coffee and a Jersey Mike sandwich, even if you don't Absolutely. do it. Um, Stephanie, what if somebody has, you know, I've always had like these suggestions. I've always, I'll be flying on the plane thinking, you know, I wish, I wish ICSC had that, this or that. You know, it would be really cool. That it would make my business a lot better. What if others watching this podcast? that have the same ideas that would really make ICSC better. Can they call you? Can they email you with ideas? Is there somebody that's like in your tech area? Could you be kind of the wheel and spoke that routes, you know, to the different departments with ideas? So we love to hear from our members and ideas. Obviously we um, want to do, uh, what we can, what we can accommodate um, changes wise. I encourage anybody to reach out to our membership department at membership at icsc.org um, or you can call our phone number um, and they'll get you in touch with someone there and they are happy to, they are always on the phone, always responsive and will share um, those ideas with the greater leadership team. Uh, and it, and this is really a great time to do it because we really are trying to to decide what, um, and to understand better what our members want and to give them um, what they want. Ask your customers. They're gonna know better than you of what they want. So I'm constantly asking them, you know, and Patrick said, I want responsiveness. And Alan said the same thing. I want to know that my deal is going to get done when it's going to get done. So it's no different. You guys are like a business. We're like your customers. Sometimes you maybe don't think of this stuff. Anyway, well, hey, Stephanie, it's been great. I really appreciate your time here Thank on you. TV. And I'll see you out at ICSC. And I think it'll be a great year, 2019 ICSC. Thanks again, Stephanie, for being on NetLease TV. And um, one other thing, we have a, a, a Patreon account, and uh, we're looking for Patreons. So it's $3 a month. And what we're going to do with the money is try to get better camera equipment, better audio to make this show better, and to make it more consistent. Um, so if you can, click on my patronage and sign up for the $3 a month. Um, the other thing on YouTube, if you could please subscribe to our channel that way, whenever we're doing one of these interviews, you'll get an email update of the interview. So thanks again, Stephanie, and uh, we'll see you at ICSC. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.